This video is intended to be used in conjunction with the written instructions that came with your product, SNC Instruction Sheet 252-550. You can download this instruction sheet at snc.com. Type SM20, SML20, SME20, and SMD20 power fuses contain high voltage. Failure to observe the precautions below will result in serious personal injury or death. Some of these precautions may differ from company operating procedures and rules. Where a discrepancy exists, users should follow their company's operating procedures and rules. This video covers storage, installation, replacement, and maintenance of SMU20 fuse units with indoor distribution, SM20, SML20, and SME20 mountings, or with outdoor distribution, SMD20 mountings. Note that appropriate end fittings must be attached to the fuse unit before it can be installed in a mounting. While the SMU20 fuse unit can be installed in each of the mountings, the end fittings for use in an SMD20 mounting are dissimilar and not interchangeable with the end fittings for use in SM20 or SML20 mountings. Moreover, end fittings for use in an SME20 mounting are not interchangeable with end fittings for SMD20, SM20, or SML20 mountings. Fuse units must be stored in a dry place away from sources of water. When storing fuses on a service truck, store them in a closed container in the original packaging. Do not store them in an open container that may collect water and soak or submerge the fuse unit. Water entry into the solid material lining will damage the fuse unit. Warning, fuse units must be stored in a dry place away from water and in their original packaging. Fuse units that were not stored properly should not be energized and should be discarded immediately. Improper storage may lead to water entry that damages the fuse unit. Energizing damaged fuse units can result in personal injury, fire, equipment, or property damage. Warning, do not leave fuse units installed in the SMD20 mounting hanging open. When closed into the mounting, the fuse units will not be damaged by rain or high humidity. However, the water tightness of the exhaust end of the fuse units cannot be guaranteed. Therefore, as a precaution, fuse units should not be left hanging open. Any rain or snow that might enter could damage the solid material lining. Energizing water-damaged fuse units can result in personal injury, fire, equipment, or property damage. For more information on handling, see the written instructions. SM20, SML20, and SME20 mountings are indoor style. Next, we'll demonstrate the steps to replace or refuse SM20, SML20, or SME20 indoor style mountings. When the fuse operates, the fuse unit does not swing open, but the blown fuse indicator moves to the extended position, providing visual evidence the fuse unit is blown. Move the fuse unit to the open position and then remove it from the mounting. For more information on removing fuses, see the written instructions for PME, PMH, or metal enclosed gear. These can be found at snc.com. Danger. SM20 and SME20 mountings do not incorporate a live switching device. Do not move an unblown SMU20 fuse unit in SM20 and SME20 mountings to the open position without first isolating or de-energizing the mounting by opening a series interrupting and isolating switch or load brake elbow. Failure to isolate or de-energize these fuse mountings before opening the fuse unit will lead to a flashover that may result in serious injury or death. Loosen the upper end fitting clamp screw and pry the clamp apart slightly using a screwdriver. Slide the upper end fitting off the upper end of the fuse unit. Then unscrew and remove the silencer. Inspect the silencer for wear, as described later in this video. Slide the lower end fitting off the upper end of the fuse unit. For unused fuse unit end fittings, a coating of no oxide A special contact lubricant has been factory applied to the current carrying surface at the factory. 
verify the presence of this oxidation inhibiting grease and that it is still free of contaminants. If necessary, clean the surface with a non-toxic, non-flammable solvent and apply a coating of no oxide A special contact lubricant or similar non-metallic filler oxidation inhibiting grease. For reused fuse unit end fittings, remove the existing coating of oxidation inhibiting grease and dirt from the current carrying surfaces of the upper end fitting and the lower end fitting using a non-toxic, non-flammable solvent. Inspect these surfaces for evidence of pitting. If pitting has occurred, file down any projections, abrade the surface until smooth with an abrasive cloth or scratch brush, and wipe clean. Apply a new coating of no oxide A special contact lubricant or similar non-metallic filler oxidation inhibiting grease to the current carrying surfaces. The lower end fitting must be attached first. Unscrew and discard the red cap located on the lower end of the fuse unit. Next, slip the lower end fitting over the upper end of the fuse unit and slide it down until the locating slot inside the lower end fitting is aligned with the locating pin on the lower ferrule. Seat the lower end fitting against the shoulder of the lower ferrule. Then, thread the silencer onto the lower end fitting and screw it on firmly. The final fractional turn should be made with a bar or wrench handle applied to the base of the silencer. Slip the upper end fitting over the fuse unit. Align the locating pin inside the upper end fitting with the locating slot in the fuse unit and seat the upper end fitting firmly against the upper end of the fuse unit. Tighten the clamp screw firmly. SMD20 mountings are for outdoor style fuses. Station style mountings follow the same installation steps, although the end fittings may look different. To install fuse unit end fittings, follow these steps. Danger! SMD20 mountings do not incorporate a live switching device. Do not move an unblown SMU20 fuse unit in the SM20 mounting to the open position without the use of a portable load brake device such as Load Buster, the SNC load brake tool, or prior to de-energizing the mounting by opening a series interrupting and isolating switch. Failure to use a load brake tool to open the fuse unit under load or failure to isolate and de-energize the SMD20 mounting prior to opening the fuse unit under load will lead to a flashover that may result in serious injury or death. The lower end fitting must be attached first. Slip the lower end fitting over the upper end of the fuse unit and slide it down until the locating slot inside the lower end fitting seats on the locating pin on the lower ferrule. Next, back off the lock nut on the clamp screw. Then tighten the clamp screw firmly, secure it with the lock nut. Slip the upper end fitting over the fuse unit. Align the locating pin inside the upper end fitting with the locating slot in the fuse unit and seat the upper end fitting firmly against the upper end of the fuse unit. Tighten the clamp screw firmly. Warning! Do not remove the red rain cap on fuse units installed in outdoor overhead applications. Removing the red cap can lead to water entry in the fuse, which can result in personal injury, fire, equipment or property damage. A coating of no oxide A special contact lubricant has been factory applied to the current carrying surface at the factory. Verify the presence of this oxidation inhibiting grease and that it is still free of contaminants. If necessary, clean the surface with a non-toxic, non-flammable solvent and apply a coating of no oxide A special contact lubricant or similar non-metallic filler oxidation inhibiting grease. For reused fuse unit end fittings, remove the existing coating of oxidation inhibiting grease and dirt from the current carrying surfaces of the upper end fitting and the lower end fitting using a non-toxic, non-flammable solvent. Inspect these surfaces for evidence of pitting. If pitting has occurred, file down any projections, abrade the surface until smooth with an abrasive cloth or scratch brush, and wipe clean. Apply a new coating of no oxide A special contact lubricant or similar non-metallic filler oxidation inhibiting grease to the current carrying surfaces.
before reinstalling a previously used SNC silencer, catalog number FDA-1103, manufactured after June of 2007 onto the end fitting of the SM20, SML20, or SME20 power fuses, inspect the internal wear indicator. The indicator is a red metal ring mounted on the bottom of the open chamber of the silencer and will erode with each fuse operation. It is designed to be worn away after three operations at full fault current. When the circle is completely worn away, the silencer should be replaced. For information on maintenance, see the written instructions. We hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions, visit our website at snc.com.